we will be enjoying your presence here in Rochester pretty soon. I hope you are ready for the cold. You have a nice jacket. I'm ready. We're in St. Louis. It's cold already. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so you've been all over the map, TV, movies, uh, Broadway you're very familiar with. What do you yeah. think about this tour? You're, you're in Pippin, and you're doing it. It's a great role. It's a great song. What are your thoughts so far? Oh, God, I love being back with a company where you start from the beginning and you learn the whole play together. You have all the experiences of being nervous and not knowing if you can do it. You know, the last four times, I think, that I've been in a Broadway musical, I have been, well, let's see, like the last three times anyway, I've been put into a show that was already going full speed ahead and you replace somebody, you jump in, you learn your stuff on the side and then you go into the show. And, and it's not the same. It's wonderful, but it's not the same as starting from the beginning. And this is a great company of people. And I just, every day, I would just sit and watch them do what they do, do the posse dancers and the singers we have, and then this incredible acrobatic team. It's like, it truly really is like I run away and join the circus, and I think everybody wants to do that once in their lives. And Pippin does pack that punch that you would see with a circus, especially if you do it well. It's this wonderful, anachronistic play. You have Charlemagne and Pippin, so it's mm -hmm. old school, middle ages, but it's mm -hmm. got today's stuff. And you play Pippin's grandmother, and the advice that you give him is live a little, take it easy, don't worry so much. Do, exactly. you, do you see that message? Do you live that message, or is that kind of the characters and you have your own thing going? No, I totally try to live that. Be here now message and everything I'm doing in this part is illuminating that to me. I mean, what I sing in the song and then what I do with this surprise bit of aerial work in the middle of the song, you know, can be a little bit terrorizing when you first start. And I found that the best way to get through that and to not be afraid and to do it gleefully, you know, gracefully, was to take every single little moment in itself and only concentrate on that. Like, you can't worry about what's going to happen if you're just saying, my foot goes here, my arm goes there, I, now I go back, you know? And that's a great metaphor for life, isn't it? Just stay in the moment, get this moment right, and then the next moment will appear, and you'll get that moment right, and so on, you know? Yeah, like right now I get to speak with Lucy Arnaz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Absolutely. So, obviously, we as the public, we absolutely love you. We also love your parents, Lucio Ball and, and Desi Arnaz. Yes, um, thank you. Uh, obviously, I was born <laughs> after the show stopped, but it, the reruns, I, I watched it all the time. I mean, part of mm -hmm. me, my yeah. comedy, is because of y your mom. And uh, do, you, do you find yourself uh, carrying them with you on a day-to-day -day basis, or have you moved past it, created your own thing, or maybe both? Both. But, you know, it, it, they were a composite of an awful lot of brilliantly talented people. I mean, it's interesting. When you say that, I think automatically of what my mother would respond to the question. And the first thing she'd say is, well, I'm nothing without my writers. You know, and so when you mention the brilliance and the funniness of the mom, I always think of my girlfriend, who is Christina Carroll, who is Bob Carroll's daughter, and that she thinks when she watches that show, my dad wrote that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like they were a composite of everybody's smarts. And it was such a great team. And that's why that show lasted all those years. It's not one person. You know, Mom was great. Dad was great. And Ethel's, the Vivians, and the Bills, and all the people who wrote it, the Bobs and the Madelines, and Jess Oppenheimer. And it was a magical chemistry of people coming together at just the right time and giving the planet what it needed. And it's interesting because it comes back around for an anniversary at a time where people need it again. Like when it celebrated its 50th anniversary, it was 2001. It was right after September 11th. And we thought, oh, my gosh, who, nobody's going to want to see some silly-ass special about I Love Lucy now. I mean, this is just p completely wrong timing. And they put it on instead of October 15th, which was the actual anniversary, they put it on November 15th, a month later, and it was the perfect timing. Mm. People just really needed to laugh again and be reminded of, you know, what's, what can still be funny in life. No need to tell you, it is cold out there, my friends. You know, you're seeing 18 right now, but you add in that wind chill, and it's going to feel like it's below zero. Uh, improving only slightly uh, to zero throughout the day. There is going to be some sun, though, so that's nice. We've got that going for us, but still only hanging out in the upper teens for a lot of the day. All right, now to get back to part two of Adam's interview with Lucy Arnaz, stop, starring in Pippin next week at the Auditorium Theater. Yeah, she is great. Uh, a spark plug, if you will. She is, of course, the daughter of legendary Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball and began her career starring with her mother. You might remember seeing her 
on those TV shows, and she talks about that experience with me. And you were not just a casual observer in those times. You actually participated. You were in the show. Do you miss those days? I was in the Here's Lucy show, and I was in a couple of episodes of the Lucy show, but never on right. the first episode. Yeah, I don't, you don't know, no, I don't miss them. I mean, that was a great education for me. I was very young at the time, and I got a chance to work with an awful lot of great people that get stars every week, and I learned a lot of music and dancing, and it prepared me for what I'm doing now. So I'm grateful to have had that experience, very grateful. But I, you know, I love the theater. I love live audiences, and we had a live audience every week with the Here's Lucy show, which is the thing I liked the most about it. I'm not all that fond of just television in itself or the long daily routines of making movies and things like that. It's nice because it's there for posterity, but the theater is my home. That's where I really come alive. Yeah, and we'll get to that in just one second. What do you think of uh, comedy and sitcoms today on TV? Well, that's too broad a question because really there's so many different that's kinds true. of comedy, right? You that's know, true. I mean, there's some, good, there's some good stuff and some I click right through I don't want to watch, but... Uh, it depends on the writing. You know, I think there's some great comedy and some dramas. I used to, the, the West Wing was one of the funniest shows I ever saw, and it was really dramatic at the <laughs> same time. You know, there's people like Aaron Sorkin who understand life in general, understand that life can be very funny, <laughs> even when it's dark. Yeah, and, and that's a reflection of life itself. You're right. It's, uh, you know, why do we laugh at funerals, that type of thing. And well, yeah. And, and you were talking about um, your interaction with the audience. You get to do that in Pippin because the yes. cast breaks that fourth wall quite a bit. Yes, and I think all those years of doing concerts and talking to my audience has made it very easy for me to do that. It, apparently with some of the other girls who played the role, that's the part they had the hardest time with was talk, you know, reaching out there and speaking to the audience in the middle of their song. And I thought, why? This is so perfect. It's like... And the audience loves when you do that. <laughs> it's engaging. It's funny. There are a lot. Of, there's lots of innuendo. You would think Pippin, old school Charlemagne, but I mean, your character. You, you're going to have people blushing. Oh, uh, you know, you know this show pretty well, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh, it's great. But what I like too is there's different versions. You know, there was the original oh, one, yeah. and then the, it was kind of tailored for uh, local productions and whatnot. I was curious, what kind of production are you guys after? Well, this is completely different. This is directed by Diane Paulus, and it has this circus framework put around it, which that never was before. Mm. So uh, Stephen Schwartz worked with Diane, and they changed a little bit of some of the interior music to allow for the circus parts. But all the songs are intact. The script is completely the same, except they added a couple lines to make sense out of the circus stuff. But it's the same story, exactly. But I love it because I don't just come on playing a very old woman and sing a song and leave. I play a troop player whose oh. name I can create in my own head. Nobody ever knows what my name is as my troop <laughs> player, but it's a separate person from birth of the grandmother. And then in this one scene, she comes on and plays the grandmother. But I'm still in three other scenes in the finale and the entract and the opening. And that was never true in the original play. So, so we're a different, we're all the same people that Fosse imagined, but we've given ourselves a, a troop reference, you know? Yeah, I love it. So even if you've seen the musical before, this is a new version, so another you reason. You have never really seen it till you've seen it done this way, just let me tell you. Uh, awe-inspiring. I, uh, <laughs> I love it. Well, hopefully I can uh, join you and see you, uh, Lucy Arnaz. As some people say, there's no time at all. I have to say goodbye and see you later. I'm looking forward to being there and seeing the Cordovas and their new baby. <laughs> Jesse and Dan. Oh, okay. You got some connections. I'm I love it. I'm reaching out. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a shout out to Jess and Dan Cordova. <laughs> I want them to come see the show and bring everyone they know. I love it. Well, we'll be sure to include this. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you Take very care. much. Bye-bye. What a down-to-earth lady. I know. So cool. She's got her people. We've got some really talented people in our studio right now, though.